Looking left, in the pocket, flushed out, moving to his left, giving chase, ball stripped loose. And LSU trying to hold on to it. Two Tigers run into each other. Ball is still loose inside the 40. Still battling for it. LSU says they have it, and they do. The snap, looking right. Looks like he wants to run. Coming near side. Pulled down from behind and dropped. Harold Perkins Jr., as much speed as Hornsby, pulls him down. Will be Allen. Hornsby in trouble under duress. Perkins will sling him down back at the 40-yard line. Loss of eight yards, and Perkins with a sack, his second of the day. Died a single back, looking to throw. In the pocket, it gets tight. Now he moves to his right. Perkins giving chase, and he brings him down at the 39-yard line. Who did that? Harold Perkins, Jr. <laughs> Motion Sanders out of the backfield at the snap. Pressure coming. Ball knocked free again, and it's on the field. No whistles. LSU comes up with it. They have the ball at the 45-yard line. Harold Perkins again stripped the ball out of Fortin's hands. Hello and welcome to Tiger's Roar. I am Jonathan Poche, joined as always by the Bud Man, Buddy Sanji, here at Old School Barbecue, bringing you another episode of Tiger's Roar. Bud Man, we should call it Harold Perkins Roar. Number 40, the true freshman, willed his team to victory this past Saturday. LSU picks up a victory 13-10 in Fayetteville. Coach Brian Kelly knew it would be a tough place to go and win a game, and it proved to be true. But, man, offense did just enough behind Josh Williams that running that running game. Two early, uncharacteristic turnovers by uh, Jaden Daniels put the LSU kind of behind the chains, behind the uh, score a little bit in, in the momentum game uh, early in that game. But defense came to play, uh, led by number 40. You saw it uh, in the highlights, four uh, it's tying a school record, four sacks and two forced fumbles. Uh, calls game on the last one. Hal Perkins, a very special player. Welcome in, bud man. Good to see you, JP. Good to see everybody. We are taping on a Tuesday, November the 15th. And uh, JP, a lot of uh, comparisons, but quite frankly, I don't think any of us have ever seen a guy take over a game like he did. Hey, there have been a couple of other calls that didn't go LSU's way where he has an, impacted and affected yep. the quarterback. Yep. One in Florida and one in this game where they actually said it wasn't a fumble. He was moving forward with his uh, hand going forward. Greg Penn, nine tackles. B.J. Ojolari playing appreciably better. Mike Baskerville having a great senior uh, season. Yep. They will uh, honor 17, season, uh, 17 seniors. Uh, once again, Saturday night. How about this, JP? You eat your pregame meal at 7 o'clock in the morning for 11 o'clock kick. Yeah, right. Now they kick it off uh, at 8 o'clock this Saturday night. UAB, they've got an excellent running back, a challenge. But look, anytime you don't play your best football and right. you still win, chilly conditions. But 8-2, uh, and two, and who would have sat up here weeks ago and said LSU A would win the West right. and B clinch it two weeks left in the regular season. Right. I don't think uh, anybody could have predicted that. Uh, that's a great segue. Of course, LSU clinches the SEC West with Alabama uh, also winning their game against Ole Miss. It came down to the wire. Uh, Ole Miss led early in that game. You thought Alabama wasn't going to help out LSU in any kind of way, but uh, it ends up happening. LSU gets the West. They will face Georgia SEC Championship a few weeks away because Brian Kelly does not want to overlook UAB or Texas A&M. Start with UAB. You mentioned the running back. They can really run the book football. McBride has over 1,400 uh, yards on the season. They know what they want to do. They want to smash in the mouth. They play very physical. Uh, they're one of the top teams in the Athletic uh, Conference USA. So this is not going to be a name your score kind of game for LSU. They're going to have to execute and prepare for a very well coached team in UAB. Uh, Coach Brian Kay, I'll tell you, he was not pleased with the amount of prep. Well, the 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 quality of preparation that they put in uh, towards Arkansas. Uh, credit to Sam Pittman came out with a very aggressive defensive plan just to attack uh, Jaden Daniels. Not really worried about gap assignment, but just get to the quarterback. And LSU kind of struggled to take advantage of that. Uh, Coach Brian Kelly says that's not going to happen again. I, I thought the two Ds, then Brock and Daniels, kind of took a step back. Jaden, as you said, was holding on to the ball way too long. But then Brock did not give him anything to get rid of it. JP, after that incredible game that none of us will ever forget with Alabama, he didn't go to the tight end one time. So, right. look, uh, it was a, an ugly win. It still counts the same as that beautiful overtime win against Alabama, LSU 8-2. and two. So you don't want to get too picky. But you do want to see Daniels get back. 
You want to see Denbrock get back to doing what they did those three games where LSU defeated Florida, Ole Miss, and Alabama. Yep. That spread people out, get rid of it quickly, spread the football around, and uh, running back by committee as well as uh, let's see Mason Taylor. You don't let him become a superstar and not throw to him one time. I think Brian Kelly said it this week. You'll hear it coming up in the tape. Got to get the ball out of his hands quicker. And uh, we know that um, teams will look at that defense and try to simulate yeah. what Auburn did and what Arkansas did. And that's that three-man front where they're dropping eight. But then yeah. there's some delayed blitzes from the edge. LSU gave up uh, way too many sacks last weekend. Yeah, you talk about these freshmen in this class, uh, but, man, Hal Perkins leads the way. Obviously, the Walter Camp Defensive uh, Player of the Week, uh, SEC Defensive Player of the Week, back-to-back back -to -back. Uh, for him. Uh, going back three weeks, he was the freshman of the week. So, look, a lot of notoriety for Hal Perkins, but you talk about the two offensive tackles, true freshman, uh, uh, Dybert, the true freshman, uh, uh, Sage Ryan on defense. Mason Taylor. Mason Taylor. Uh, such production from this freshman class that uh, it's, a good, it's a good building block. It's a good foundation stone for this program. And, excuse me, there's another one on the horizon. His name is Demario Tolan. Right. He's number 32. Look, they challenged Greg Penn and said, you've got to play better or number 32 is going to get some of your reps. And he played fantastic. So uh, one of the things I mentioned on the radio show today, I don't think people have given enough credit for. Look at the difference the way LSU is tackling than earlier in the year. Hey, props to Joe Fouché. This is going to be his fi final uh, Tiger game uh, as, a, as a Tiger. Him and Greg Brooks coming over. You know that game, former Arkansas players, yep. meant a lot to them. Uh, some of these guys that have come over from the transfer portal, like Jared Bernard Converse, uh, Jay Bramlett, the punter and all. So it will be a festive uh, atmosphere. But the thing about Harold Perkins that people are talking about nationally, and now he leads LSU with seven and a half sacks, four tied Chuck Wally, who had uh, four in one game. Uh, listen, there's a chance. If you don't know where 40 is. You better know because they're going to start doubling him. Yep. But, JP, to have the honor to play the spy on all the quarterbacks, and this is a true freshman. Yep. One of the things JP and I were talking about the show, he doesn't leave his feet. He doesn't commit too early. He doesn't jump up and let the quarterback around, run around him right. and give up uh, you know, the lane. But, man, when he, is, when he locks into you, he doesn't miss. And as we saw, he can run with the fastest quarterbacks in the country. Right. That was the best storyline from Saturday, I believe, when they kept on talking about Malik Hornsby. This guy ran the, the last leg for the fastest relay team in, in high school across the nation. He's got elite, uh, Olympic-type speed. And here comes Forty running him down from the back time and time again. And not only was he running him down, then he was separating him from the football. That's like almost like a cheat code. As soon as that quarterback leaves the pocket, which – not looking too far ahead, but Stetson Bennett is very good at rolling to his right and final receivers downfield. Number four, he's going to have to close down in SEC Championship game. Yeah, I, I'm kind of in the coach's mindset. Yeah. I'm going one play at a yeah. time, one week at a time. Uh, look, everybody's trying to talk about getting in the CFP playoff. It's rat poison. It's hogwash. Worry about what you have to do. Quite frankly, I still think Tennessee and Georgia are better, and they should be. Uh, Josh Heupel in his second year at Tennessee and Kirby Smart, as we know, uh, look, that is for another show yep. and another week. But still, when you think, who would have thought Alabama would lose two games in the regular season? Now, both of them were close losses to Tennessee and LSU. Yeah. But to see LSU win the West, now it's that old adage, how much success can you handle? How much is that going to influence the way you prepare for UAB and obviously Texas A&M, which – I had a friend of mine, and I asked him what he thought of uh, Texas A&M, and he sent me a little video of, of on fire trash bin. <laughs> um. Uh, ah, you talking about me? You talking about me? Sorry, bud, man. I thought you had another friend. I think I was your only friend, bud, man. But no, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. But uh, yeah, we're gonna take our first quick break of this Tigers roar. We'll come back and you'll hear from uh, Coach Brian Kelly his Monday press conference. We'll also have some highlights. Take you back to this past Saturday from Fayetteville when LSU defeated the Razorbacks. We'll also talk to Mike Scarborough from TigerBait.com later on in this program. So you don't want to miss it. Don't go anywhere. You are watching Tigers roar. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugge, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugge Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Visit Treads and Care Tire Company's new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for over 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair and top-notch customer service. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having Randa in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats. The flavor says it all. Right now, at both locations of Team Honda, the Dream Deal sales event is now even better. For a limited time, get 0% financing on a great selection of certified Hondas. The savings are yours at Team Honda on Segan Lane in Baton Rouge and Team Honda of Acadiana on I-49, just south of Opelousas. here on Tiger's Roar. Remind you guys, check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pelican Broadcasting. A great way to keep up with everything we do here at the Pelican. All the Tiger's Roar episodes, the Clarence Bug Show, uh, the whole game, but everything we do at the Pelican goes on our YouTube page. So go check it out, youtube.com slash Pelican Broadcasting. While you're there, go ahead and follow the subscribe button or click the subscribe button, I should say. Give us a follow so you know every time we post something new uh, right there to our YouTube page. Uh, once again, I remind you guys, we are at Old School Barbecue, 10655 Corsi Boulevard, a great place to come grab some lunch each and every day. I uh, had a great deal on a fabulous pulled pork sandwich to call it the Boss Hog. You get two sides and a, and a drink under eight bucks. Uh, great barbecue chicken, the smoked sausage. Uh, come check it out. Great ribs, too. Old School Barbecue right here on Corsi Boulevard. I'll uh, get back to LSU football. Bud, man, 13 10 was the final score. Took LSU for a long time to get into a rhythm on offense. Had the early turnovers by Jaden Daniels. Uh, one interception, only a second one of the year. Then he had that fumble in the pocket, too. Uh, happened on a mesh point, but Arkansas played the offense, uh, played their defense very well. They attacked the point of the, uh, the right, the point of the mesh between the uh, quarterback and the running back. Made him make a quick decision. We already know that's a very delicate situation right there at that mesh. Outside edges were very aggressive for Arkansas. LSU failed to take advantage of that because Brian Kelly says, look, we know what happened. We know how to fix it, and it's not going to happen again. So uh, going against UAB, another three down front, uh, kind of the same look that Arkansas gave. They're going to bring blitzes from a lot of different ways. Uh, they're multiple. They have three down, four down. So uh, it's not going to be a pushover team. Uh, UAB, the Dragons, they can run the football. We already talked about the very good running back. So in your opinion, what does LSU have to do 
not only to win the game, but to feel confident going into A and M, not to have a big letdown like he had kind of happened this past Saturday. Not to beat up Jaden Daniels, but he made some major faux pas yep. on some of these read option plays, and Coach Kelly uh, is uh, always uh, going to be demanding, but not demeaning. Uh, I would imagine they got into a lot of film study, and he's got to make better decisions. Uh, one of the times he gave the ball to Josh Williams, had he uh, taken the, the football away and ran with it, he would have ran for 15, 20 yards and picked up a big first down. The other time right. he was supposed to uh, take it away and throw it. And so got to do a little bit better job. This is a guy from California. That's probably one of the colder games he's ever played in. <laughs> and uh, what did you think? You got a son yeah. uh, playing football. You want to see chicken broth and hot chocolate and coffee on the sidelines? Or or did that shock you a little bit? No, I, 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 look, whatever you want to try to keep my kid warm on the inside while he's playing a football game i appreciate it. if you want to try coffee hot water chicken broth whatever and there was a method behind the madness you know it had yeah. the salt for the hydration the warmness for uh to keep the insides warm so uh, whatever you want to try I i'm fine with it it's funny you bring up the weather and I it brings me back to when coach kelly first got to louisiana he was kind of joking around but man i heard it was kind of be hot down here but it's been like the you know, san diego yeah, weather yeah. in the 70s well coach i appreciate that you practiced outside for the for the january and february months but uh, it was cold this past Saturday. Uh, his players, I think, certainly felt it. Uh, didn't have a lot of guys out there with no shirts on for the pregame. You saw a lot of hoods. You know, these guys were, were, were feeling that damp cold. Uh, so, yeah, you get both ends of the spectrum. And believe it or not, it's going to get you ready for this weekend, yep. folks. The game uh, is at 8 o'clock. It might start 8.06, 8.10, whatever. Uh, upper 40s getting into the lower 40s or even into the 30s by the end of it. So it is a good litmus test. Yeah. Most of you know LSU playing at Texas A&M. I was referring to the dumpster fire <laughs> with Texas A&M, but the Saints yeah. – yeah. Or, and my bad on that, but the Saints are when you, you sent me the yeah. dumpster fire pick. But that's going on with A&M. And look, let's be honest. This is going to be a UAB's bowl season and game. Yeah. Same thing with Texas A&M. Yep. That being said, in answering your questions, uh, I think everybody's excited about the defense. But you've got to eliminate the sacks. Jaden's got to get rid of the ball quicker. You've got to throw in space. And you've got to spread the ball around. But uh, it has been a, an incredible and remarkable year, yep. and uh, you Tiger fans uh, certainly have deserved it after well, the last two years. Yeah, we'll take you back to this past Saturday. LSU picks up their eighth win of the season at, in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, voiced by Chris Blair, here are the highlights from this past Saturday's 13-10 victory over the Arkansas Razorbacks. Rivalry game featuring the Golden Boot Trophy and a border battle here in the SEC as the Arkansas Razorbacks host your number seven Fighting Tigers of LSU. Third and 18, back at the 27-yard line of their own. 30 sacks now on the season for this Arkansas team. With a handoff to Williams, and Williams up the middle. Plenty of room up across the 40, the 45. Picks up the first down on about a 20-yard gain to the 47-yard line of LSU. Right up the middle. Now he'll motion at the snap. He'll get the jet toss coming near side. Stiff arms a man at the Arkansas 48. Stays up right inside the 40 and finally spun down on the near sideline right at the Arkansas 40. It's another big gainer. First down and 10 on the pickup by neighbors in the run game. Empty backfield. Hornsby wants to run and he's tripped up. B.J. Ojolari got him around the ankles and Hornsby falls forward. But not much doing on the play. Going to set up fourth and about five after a one-yard gain. Hornsby going to run downhill to his left, and LSU fights through the blocks and brings him down. Maybe lost a yard back at the three. And Coach Pittman going to roll the dice, 50% on the year on fourth downs. Motion Sanders, snap to Hornsby. Tight pocket, Hornsby going to be brought down at the two-yard line. Turnover on downs, the LSU defense delivers. Looking left, in the pocket, flushed out, moving to his left, giving chase, ball stripped loose. And LSU trying to hold on to it, two Tigers run into each other, ball is still loose inside the 40, still battling for it, LSU says they have it, they and do. they do! Turner snaps the football back, Daniels looking right, backside pressure, he feels it, now he's running to his left, trying to get by Sanders, does at the 30, cuts back inside the 25, outside the numbers at the 20, and eventually brought down at the 17-yard line as the Tigers enter the Capital One red zone for the first time today, a gain of 30 yards on an improvised play by Jaden Daniels. Slade Roy will snap it back, Jay Bramblett will hold. 
Little high, but placement is down. Ramos swings the leg, kick is on the way, and the kick is good, and we are tied at three all. Here's the snap, looking right. Looks like he wants to run, coming near side, pulled down from behind and dropped. Harold Perkins Jr., as much speed as Hornsby, pulls him down for virtually another loss. Maybe lost a yard in an incredible athletic play by Harold Perkins Jr. Here's the snap to Daniels. Handoff Emery, running left side, breaks through an arm tackle, gets free across the 40, heads toward outside the numbers, inside Arkansas territory, but he coughed up the football. I think the officials are saying Emory was down. LSU's arguing that as well. Jaden Johnson stripped it loose, but it looked like Emory was down, and that is the call. A gain of 33 on the run. Daniels with the ball in the pocket. Drops it off. Williams has it. Sidesteps the defender at the 35. Gets down near the 31, maybe just a yard shy of the first down. The Tigers going for it on fourth and a yard at the Arkansas 31-yard line. Trip receivers left, one to the right. Daniels gives it to Williams. Big hole, got the first down, punishes a razor back at the 25 and puts an official on his backside down around the 21. And here's the snap. Good snap, good placement. Kick is up on its way, and the kick is good, and LSU has their first lead of the day. It's now 6-3, Fighting Tigers. This time again, they'll go off to green, but B.J. Ojolari cuts him down quickly right at midfield. No gain on the play. Will be Allen. Hornsby in trouble under duress. Perkins will sling him down back at the 40-yard line. Loss of eight yards, and Perkins with a sack, his second of the day. Two to the left side, a single back, looking to throw. In the pocket, it gets tight. Now he moves to his right. Perkins giving chase, and he brings him down at the 39-yard line. Who did that? Harold Perkins, Jr., <laughs> back-to-back -back sacks. It'll set up fourth down in a cab ride and Arkansas forced to punt it away. Williams the running back. Here's the snap. Give to Williams. Wide open up the middle in the end zone. Touchdown Fighting Tigers. Two by two is Fortin in trouble and is grabbed and thrown to the ground. Back inside the 15 at the 13-yard line. Savion Jones with another sack. A loss of seven yards. First down snap. Daniels wants to throw. Pocket holds, fires it out near side, catch grabbed up and around the 28-yard line. Neighbors, the give to Williams. Williams again finds the first down, stays upright across the 40, across the 45, and Williams up to the 48-yard line, picks up 10 yards. He's over 100 yards for the day, and it's a first down for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Motion Sanders out of the backfield at the snap. Pressure coming, ball knocked free again, and it's on the field. No whistles. LSU comes up with it. They have the ball at the 45-yard line. Harold Perkins again stripped the ball out of Fortin's hands. The umpire called it a penalty. The rule on the field of a fumble recovered the by the defense. But LSU victorious, 13 to 10 over Arkansas, winning the battle of the Golden Boot. And here we are back with Tigers Roar. That was this past Saturday. LSU wins 13 to 10 by hitting a heroic performance by true freshman number 40, Harold Perkins. They get the boot back. It is the ugliest trophy in all of college football uh, that uh, everybody has in these rivalry games. It, man, it's jagged, and it, you can you got to be careful carrying it. You can cut your arms all up. But uh, kudos to Joe Fouché, Greg Brooks going back. Kudos to those. Uh, Greg Fouché, Joe, uh, Joe Brooks. I mean, uh, uh, Joe Fouché, Greg, Greg Brooks. Brooks. Last year, wins with Arkansas. This oh, year, wins wow. it with LSU. Two years in a row. I mean, goodness. They have to be the first players in history at a, at a Golden Boot to Fouché do that. Fouché playing appreciably better. He's really coming on. By the way, shout out to Damian Ramos. He's been very consistent. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, I don't know if you picked up Jaray Jenkins is doing a great job as one of the gunners yep. on uh, punt return defense. So, LSU tweak it. Now you got to get better. Got to get some momentum on the offense. And you got to get Jaden Daniels to make the right reads and get ready to football yeah. a little quicker this yeah. weekend. Yeah, got to clean up pre-snap penalties, too. You saw LSU go for it a couple times on fourth down. One with a fake punt that actually worked, of course. Uh, got called back by the offside. So, uh, got to clean up some things pre-snap. Uh, pre but uh, you know Coach Brian Kelly is going to have his team prepared this, for, for UAB this coming Saturday. I gave Coach Kelly the nickname of Coconuts after the Alabama game, and he brought the Coconuts to Arkansas again. Yeah, he did. We're taking a quick break here on Tigers. We'll come back and join us. We'll let you hear from head coach himself. Well, we're going to hear from uh, Monday press conference with head coach Brian Kelly. Uh, don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss it. You're on Tigers Roar. Tremont 
Tremontes has meat. Tremontes has seafood. Tremontes has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontes.com. Make the most of every moment together in a three-row Mazda CX-9. Find yours during the season of inspiration. Make no payments for 90 days on a new CX-9 during the season of inspiration at Team Mazda. Hey everybody, I'm Kevin Gallagher. This is Roy Fletcher. We hope you'll join us for Fletch Nation, especially if you like talking politics. Hey, come and join us. We'll give you the information and then we'll give you the context. We and by the way... We'll give you fun, too. Uh, lots of fun. We hit the local races, the state. We even look at what's going on all across America. And by the way, this space is available. If you'd like to talk about advertising, send your emails to Roy Fletcher at RoyFletcher.com and join us every week here on the Pelican for Fletch Nation. Caught spiders. Premier Pest Services. Every great story starts with the rush of thrilling gaming action. Handcrafted flavors, eager to please. Getaways for some well-deserved me time. And rewards worth bragging about. If it's a story worth telling, it starts at La Berge Baton Rouge. What's your story? Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Treads and Care Tire Company announces its new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair with top-notch customer service. Treads and Care offers the convenience of shuttle service and pickup and delivery of your vehicle. You can also enjoy the comfortable customer area, complete with workstations, high-speed internet, and a complimentary coffee bar. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. Treads and Care, the tires you need and the service you want. Welcome back to Tiger's Roar. I am Jonathan Poche, joined by Buddy Sanji here from Old School Barbecue. Come check it out. Great food at great prices. You can bring the whole family. It's a cool atmosphere. They have TVs all over the wall. So come check out a ball game over at Old School Barbecue, 10655 Corsi Boulevard. But, man, jumping back into it, uh, Coach Brian Kelly had the press conference on Monday, recapping this uh, past weekend against Arkansas, and also looking forward to UAB. He did touch on the tragedy at the Virginia campus. Oh, man. Uh, heartbreaking. Our, hearts and, uh, our thoughts and prayers certainly go out to the families affected by that. Uh, I mean, whew, we won't get into it. Tragedy, but, but there man. There was one local kid that who was, was kid. affected. Yeah. Uh, I love this kid over at UHA, Mike Collins. He's a running back. His dad, Mike Collins Sr., we're praying for your son and your family. He was also impacted and yep. was shot in the back, but he's in such good health. They think he's going to be fine. But please uh, put all of uh, all of those uh, ones affected in, in Virginia by this senseless shooting yeah. in your prayers. Yeah, well, uh, on, a, on a lighter note, uh, there, there was a football game played this past Saturday, LSU versus Arkansas. Uh, head coach Brian Kelly is going to recap that game and also uh, look pre preview excuse me, uh, the UAB game this coming Saturday. Kicks off at 8 o'clock. Uh, ESPN 2 on the tube. So here is head coach Brian Kelly. Uh, with that, we'll, um, we'll move on to uh, this weekend and, and obviously last weekend. Um, you know, our, our football team was challenged um, for four quarters uh, against, uh, you know, an Arkansas football team that we knew was going to be difficult to play uh, at Fayetteville, and, and they were. Um, they were well prepared. Uh, they were well coached for the game, and um, quite frankly, uh, you know, I think our guys, uh, look, winning's a habit and losing's a habit, and, you know, what we can take out from that game is that um, they have um, 
done the things necessary to make winning a habit. And just like losing becomes a habit, um, they found a way to win that football game. Um, and, you know, we had some, some guys that uh, had superlative, um, you know, performances. Uh, Harold Perkins was uh, certainly the SEC Player of the Week again. Uh, I don't think that's to anybody's surprise. Um, he certainly also was a National Player of the Week. Um, I think he was the, uh, let me get the facts down here so I have them right. What was he? What national player was he? Walter. Thank you, Walter Camp. Why don't you tell me? Make we'll make this easier. It's interactive. Um, the Walter. <laughs> except for calling plays, we'll 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 leave that for you. Can just write that stuff down. Um, Walter Camp. So obviously some some great individual performances. Um, and, and we did things uh, defensively that, that allowed us, uh, you know, to find a way to win the football game. Special teams were solid. And, uh, you know, we found a running game that, that allowed us to, to put together enough offense uh, to win a football game. But, again, I'll go back to the fact that, you know, wing's a habit, and our guys have done a lot of things the right way to create winning habits off the field that contributed to finding a way to win the football game. So uh, there's a lot to work on. We've got to coach better. We've got to prepare our football team better. We've got to do a lot of things better. Um, that falls on everybody uh, associated, and that, that's what we have to work on this week uh, going into to UAB. Um, a lot of this will be about our improvement, um, our preparation, uh, how we get ready to um, – Look, if we just get 1% better this week, we'll be a better football team. And, and, and that will be our focus. This is a really good football team that we're playing in UAB. As I segue into this weekend's game, it's senior day at LSU. Uh, we'll have 17 uh, seniors that we'll, we'll be honoring. 13 of them uh, have already earned their college degree. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously our mission is to graduate champions and, and we'll be able to, uh, to live up to that um, that creed. So, uh, kick off eight o'clock. A later start for our guys, but um, they'll um, they'll certainly uh, go through a similar routine that we've had uh, throughout uh, the year. As I mentioned, um, last home game at Tiger Stadium, uh, and playing a UAB team that um, in first year head coach Brian Vincent, who's taken over, he had been the OC. Uh, they have you know, one of the best running backs in the country in, in Dwayne McBride. He's got over 1,400 yards rushing, um, very accomplished on offense. Um, I, I think from an overview, uh, what I would say is a very mature team. This is made up of fifth-year seniors. There's, there's a number of sixth-year players on this team. So this is a mature veteran football team um, that has a very good offensive structure. Uh, this is a team that knows what they want to do. They want to run the inside, outside zone play. They want to be play action pass. Defensively, they're in a three down, four down structure. It's a well coached football team. And uh, it's a team that, um, quite frankly, um, is better than its record. Um, they've had three or four losses that could easily be wins. And this could be one of the top teams um, in, in the non power five that that um, would be coming into Tiger Stadium. So this is a challenge. This is a really good challenge for our football team, and we'll have to play well um, in, in Tiger Stadium against uh, a really um, veteran football team. And, again, led by Hopkins defensively, um, you know, very productive linebackers and Wilder and Taylor. Um, and, and, again, I think what stands out to me is that their, their run game, uh, their play action pass and then defensively their ability to move in to three down four down looks and, and be multiple so um, You know again uh, This is gonna be a lot about you know our football team um, Being better prepared and and then flipping the switch into um, You know better performance on Saturday, so All you guys
talked about just you know getting one percent better uh, specifically on the offensive side after having three really good weeks just kind of what do you want to address on that side of the ball after uh maybe not playing to the way you had uh against arkansas yeah so you know we were defended uh quite well and and so i think part of this is understanding what adjustments that we have to make when teams are looking to defend things that have been really good for us so you know, we've got to make some adjustments. We've got to look at how we're doing things and, and, and be, um, I think, one step ahead, you know, from that perspective. And um, have some adjustments, do some things that allow us to be uh, effective at what we're good at. And um, quite frankly, our preparation has to be better. We've got to coach better. And uh, I'll put a lot of that on myself in terms of preparing our football team, in particular on the offensive side of the ball. Coach, outside of Har Harold Perkins, how much has the flu impacted the team? Do you have some other guys that have caught it, or yeah, I mean it's been it's been fairly pervasive, you know, throughout the program. I think we've managed it the best we can, um, but yeah, it's around. Um, it, I don't know that it had anything to do with our performance on Saturday. Um, we we just um, you know we're dealing with it on a day to day basis. Um, first, is that why there was chicken broth on the sideline? And then I wanted to ask a football question. <laughs> I prefer clam chowder, um, <laughs> but they weren't going to go with the New England style. Um, you know, obviously the salt, um, you know, for hydration purposes, and then obviously hot because of the, the weather. Um, so a combination, Dr. Frakes had put together uh, that with a couple of other um, elixirs. Um, I think he could have sold it at the the state fair and made a little bit of money uh, as the LSU uh, way of getting you better in the second half. But no, I think all of them had some form of, you know, nutrients that, that were needed for the guys at that particular time. And then I wanted to ask, um, what makes Josh Williams such an effective runner? Well, he's, uh, first of all, you know, the, the physicality that he brings, low pads, uh, plays low, strong, physical. Um, and, and he's, you know, he's so strong. His lower half is so strong. He keeps his legs moving. And once, once you think you've got him tackled, there's three or four more yards. Runs to daylight. Very effective runner in, in all those areas. But I think his strength is, um, you know, his ability to do a little bit of everything for us. Pass, protect, catch the ball out of the backfield, and, and be a strong inside-out runner. You may not love this with two games left to go, but... Will you or anyone on the staff begin looking at Georgia and starting any type of prep? No. I mean, I, I think we'll have plenty of time, you know, to um, get information on Georgia. And, and we're, we're pretty much aware of, you know, Georgia and who they are and what they're about. So, you know, our focus will be on UAB and A&M and &M because it, it, they matter. Those games, for us, in terms of where we are, uh, and the development of our program. These singular games are so important to us. Look, I get the SEC championship game is, is what it is, right? It gets you one step. But um, as we're climbing this ladder for us in terms of the development of our program, um, these games are so pivotal for us in terms of our development. It's, it's crazy to be able to think of anything else but these individual games. Coach, a couple of things. The three-man front by Arkansas, do you expect to see that from other teams until you adjust? And two, as a program, are you ahead of schedule? You know, we've seen three down probably more than any other front. Um, I think, you know, I think what was different is um, their edges were a little bit more aggressive. Um, and... You know, we just simply didn't take advantage of that aggressiveness. And um, like I said, I think it falls on me. And, and uh, we've got to prepare our team to be more aggressive uh, to teams that want to play three down with the edges being so close. Um, we have talented players on the perimeter. Um, and, and we've got to get the ball out to them. So uh, that's the answer to question one. Um, question two was... Yeah, you know, look, um, I didn't put any wins or losses on this team. Uh, I put, I want to play hard. I want to be better in November. I want to teach them how to win. I think we've hit all of those markers. 
um, and 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 that's kind of where I wanted this program to be. So I think we're we're at where we should be at this time. All right, that was head coach Brian Kelly for his Monday's press conference. Uh, the last question you heard from that press conference, uh, Coach Ed, Ed Daniels asked Coach if he, where he thought this program was, if it was on schedule, behind schedule. And uh, you heard Coach right there. He wasn't going to put a number of wins and losses on this team. He didn't really know what he had, but he wanted the team to play better in November than they were in December. That's certainly the case. And, uh, look, you win the SEC West. You're, all your destinies right there laying in front of you. He doesn't want to look ahead to Georgia. You heard him say his comments. You know, it'd be crazy for me to look ahead at UAB and Texas A&M to look past uh, Georgia. Every team is important. But uh, with your destiny in front of you, bud, man, in year one, which is supposed to be a rebuild, I would say you are far ahead of schedule. I'm happy that Brian Kelly and his program has had early success because this total buy into the little things and change your perception on every little decision you make, sometimes that's that's great in theory. But you don't see immediate success with the roster you have and the guys that are buying in. Uh, they've done things a certain way. Uh, later in this press conference, they asked Coach about senior night and what are some of the stories he thought. He talked about Michael Baskerville and how when he came to this program, yeah. he heard that Baskerville didn't go to class and he had a lot of problems with, 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 with that such things. And look, now this guy's already got his degree. Looking forward to uh, senior night to be celebrated both on the field and in the classroom. Graduate champions has been the message to me, Bud, man, they are far ahead of schedule in the Brian Kelly area. Everybody knows that Brian Kelly was at Notre Dame for a long time, but uh, JP, I'm not sure if you know this stat. Brian Kelly, as a head coach, has not lost a game in November since Stanford, November of 17. That means 18, 19, 20, 21, wow. and now 22. 18 consecutive wins. Wow. Coach Kelly, in the month of November, you heard him screaming to his team a couple weeks ago. Yep. October is for pretenders, November for contenders. You know, we we talking about Georgia and all this other thing. I mentioned this today. We wait so long for football to get here. Why are people trying to skip the last couple of chapters of the book and get to the final couple Great chapters? Point. Yep. Let all of us enjoy, we'll have plenty. Now look, it's not 19 and you and I, you may see 19 again. I'll never see 19 again, but heck of a year. And the sign of a good team, JP, when you don't play your best, you still found a way uh, to win. Ask the Philadelphia Eagles who were undefeated, didn't have their best and they lost. Ask Georgia. Earlier in the year, they were at Missouri and had to storm back late. So it's hard to get your team up more than five yeah. or six weekends. But Brian Kelly has some kind of magic in November, and you like their chances. They're going to be uh, uh, 14, 15, 16-point favorites this weekend, obviously favorites against Texas A&M. Yeah. That dumpster fire right now. <laughs> In College yeah. Station. UAB comes in with a record of 5-5. Five and five. They're 3-4 and four in the American Athletic Conference. They like to run the football. They have one of the best running backs in the league. Uh, Dwayne McBride's got over 1,400, 1400 yards uh, so far in the season on the ground. Uh, LSU looks for their ninth win of the season, which, bud, man, if you just ask me, I, 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 I think we both had 8-4, and four, right? 8-4 eight eight would and have four. all win 9-4, but now who would have thought they would be playing an extra game right. because of the SEC championship? Right, so uh, we'll take another quick break. But before we do, remind you guys, check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pelican Broadcasting. Go check out Tiger's Roar. If you missed anything in this program, it's archived for you on YouTube, so go check it out. Once again, youtube.com slash Pelican Broadcasting. Take another break, and then we'll come back with Mike Scarborough from Tiger Bait.com. Talk some recruiting. Talk some playoff football. That's right. Week two of the playoffs all around South Louisiana. Uh, high school football. It's revving up. So we'll talk to Mike Scarborough after this break. Don't go anywhere. You are watching Tiger's Roar. Debbie, it's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. 
we have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hi gang, Clarence Bugs here, inviting you to come by Old School Barbecue, 10655 Corsi Boulevard, where we tape the show live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 11 o'clock. Come by and feast on news, sports, current events, love of God and country, and lots of common sense, along with some of the best barbecue anywhere on the planet. 10655 Corsi Boulevard, Old School Barbecue, home of the Clarence Bugs Show. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Right now, at both locations of Team Honda, the Dream Deal sales event is now even better. For a limited time, get 0% financing on a great selection of certified Hondas. The savings are yours at Team Honda on Seagan Lane in Baton Rouge and Team Honda of Acadiana on I-49, just south of Opelousas. And we continue here on Tiger's Roar, John the Poche, Buddy Sanji. And we're joined by Mike Scarborough from TigerBait.com. Mike, I know it's a busy time of the year. High school football in week two of the playoffs. Uh, you're all around the state with Tiger Bait. I uh, also have a great YouTube page and LSU Tigers on Tiger Bait. So go check that out. Mike Scarborough, good evening, sir. How are you? All right, doing good. Just, uh... It's, uh, it, we're not where we thought we would be uh, this time of year. LSU, FCC West champs, and, um, you know, you got the men and women's basketball teams rolling and uh, recruiting in, in high gear and, and, and uh, the baseball team uh, scrimmaging. So it's, there's something every day. That's right, Mike, and we certainly know recruiting is hot right now. LSU in a great spot, in at 8-2, 6-1 in the SEC. Uh, went to Fayetteville last weekend. We're going to host UAB. Uh, talk about the weekend. Talk about the state of recruiting for LSU. Got to be a hot topic, a, a hot team nationally, uh, what they've done recently, Mike. Yeah, they are. And, um, you know, obviously now that they're in the SEC championship game, that's going to change some things as far as their recruiting visit weekends in the month of December. Um, but uh, having a, talked to a source, uh, that, 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 that's, an, that's an issue that they like dealing with. So, um, but... Obviously, they're already at 24 commitments for the class, uh, 25, excuse me, for the class of 23. So now you start to wonder how many do they go over? Do they go 28, 27? You know, what, what's that number going to be like with high school prospects uh, as they get to uh, December 21st in the first signing period? Yeah. Couple questions, Mike. Uh, did Toviano go to Texas? And uh, secondly, if you could give us an update on uh, Joshua Mickens from uh, Indiana. He's uh, one of the early commitments. Really good from the edge, but uh, we're here in Ohio State to, is battling and, and has offered him and won him, wants him now. Yeah, I, I, I think on uh, Tobiano, um, getting that confirmed has uh, been un, uh, not been easy that he was there, but as far as I know, he was there. And um, but he, I was also told this morning that uh, they, they think at College Station he might schedule an official visit to Texas A&M. Uh, but I, I don't think there's anything to worry about with Toviano. Uh, I think he's all LSU. And what about Mickens? Yeah, I, I'm. Is there a flip alert on him? I don't. I don't know that there's something to be worried about. I haven't heard anything. But um, certainly, when when you schedule another visit, it makes things interesting. You know, you guys were talking about December 3rd, and I remember uh, succinctly, and uh, it's happened in the past, JP, 
you pick up the phone and you say, oh, by the way, I'm in Atlanta in year one playing for the SEC championship. Mike, what kind of impact has this season had and what kind of momentum does LSU uh, even have more so now that they've won the SEC West and, and will play Georgia in, uh, in, in, in first weekend in, in December? No, it, 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 it's, just, it's just like it was after in 2019 where LSU was – but it's hot as fire, and we kept saying the sexiest team in college football. And then the bottom fell out, and it was two years in the wilderness. It's like immediately LSU right back in that discussion. And when you see national pundits talking about programs, uh, and you hear others talking about, well, A&M wants to get to where the LSU's and the Clemson's are. You know, so LSU's back in that discussion now. Where you thought they were going to be after 2019. So. Yeah. In, in a blink of an eye, they're right back there in in Brian Kelly's uh, first year. So, yeah. you know, now so we, we see what's going to happen the rest of the way. A and M obviously would like that. That's going to be their bowl game. Um, you know, they're going to get some injured players back. Uh, can they, can they beat LSU and, and make things interesting? And then you start to see where what LSU's bowl possibilities are going to be. Um, you know, depending on what happens in Atlanta and, and how the rest of it shakes out, but. Uh, everything in my mind, the rest of the way is is is, is, is Lanyap. It, it, yeah. You know, they're, they're so far ahead of schedule to where you thought they were, were going to be in, in expectations. Uh, I, I think LSU fans are just enjoying the ride, and, and whatever happens, happens, because it, in reality, you're not supposed to be in these discussions. All right. Mike, uh, we know you are the recruiting guru. You follow these recruiting classes uh, from then when they were in middle school all the way through signing day and then beyond. Uh, we talked a lot on this show about how Will Campbell and Emory Jones had, had a chance to impact the offensive line immediately when they got to LSU. Uh, but this entire freshman class, I mean, I don't think anybody could have predicted how impactful guys like Campbell, Jones, Perkins, uh, Taylor would have been this season. Yeah, I, I, it's Typically at LSU, you might have one or two freshmen that um, make some noise. Right. And maybe you've got a, a Stingley, one guy who's really a standout. But to have four guys that are competing at the level they are is, is, is unheard of, particularly when you think about offensive linemen. And then, and then it's not just, oh, well, they're a talented freshman. Well, whether they're linebacker, regardless of whether they're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, what linebacker in the country is performing at a higher level than Harold Perkins? Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, th th that's, you know, we, we we're talking about all, all season long, uh, you know, all freshman team. Well, why wouldn't Harold Perkins be on some other teams? <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, no doubt about it. Team, uh, you know, could, I mean, could he be a second team All-American at least? If he keeps going with these stats, he is. And look, J.P., uh, and, Mike, uh, one other little caveat. Just think what they're going to do as far as the transfer portal. We saw they, they did a great job of getting bodies in here. But, Mike, you got to figure they're going to be uh, a, a choice for five, six, seven, maybe transfer portals come in. Everybody's talking about possibly 35 with the total. But now uh, in year one, JP and Mike, look what you're selling after year one. Uh, recruiting going to be uh, uh, up to, to the sky. Uh, can they finish one, or you still think uh, two, three, four, somewhere in that neighborhood, Mike? I think two, three, four, but, I mean, that, that's fantastic. you still got Harbor out there, um, you know, uh, uh, Toviano. I mean, uh, w when you get into that, uh, in those numbers at, at the top, and then it's and then it's really about now, now that you've got the transfer portal, it, it, it's more than just what your high school hall is. It's what your your off season total is. So, to me, it's more like a, what, what is the infusion of players that are new. That that it, it, it's. I mean, what, what if you, what if you had a, a tight end with two or three el, uh, years of eligibility, uh, who, who's a big timer? Um, um, you know, I think they're going to get a transfer portal running back. Is that a kid who's who's a, 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 a juggernaut that's got a couple of years of eligibility? So, I, I think you judge recruiting classes really all together. And so, if you finish third or fourth, but you, you have uh, possibly uh, get a couple of three starters out of the portal to go with it, I, I don't know how much more you could ask for. Right. 
Mike, we have uh, just a couple minutes left here on Tiger's War. Can't let you out of here without telling everybody about TigerBait.com and how they can subscribe today. Yeah, well, you uh, you brought up high school recruiting, and I, and I know you follow the uh, the Catholic League in New Orleans. I was at uh, Holy Cross uh, at St. Paul's last Friday night to see Kobe Young, the wide receiver uh, from Holy Cross. Yeah. St. Paul's won that game. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're hitting the road uh, uh, all throughout, and we got it uh we got it all for you on TigerBait.com. You can try us out for one dollar, and uh, we got a, a, an interview with the number one kicker in the country from uh, Parkway in Bowser City. They got the number one kicker in the country and the number one girls basketball player in the country. So they're doing something right at Parkway. Wow. Hey, uh, last question. You're going to do player interviews. Uh, any ideas when you're going to get a chance, to, along with other members of the media, to interview the star? Harold Perkins. Uh, you, uh, you read my mind because I was thinking that uh, a little while ago if I was going to be, be able to bring that up because I, I, I keep uh, wondering if we're going to get him, and Karim told me last week that he was close. Hmm. So is this finally the week? I'm, I think it's getting to the point now where they're, they're, it, they're, they're having a hard time holding off the media and, and, and a hard time holding him back. All right, Mike, certainly appreciate your time. Look forward to talking to you soon. Stay safe this weekend. It's going to be cold, but we look forward to all the great coverage from TigerBait.com. Good stuff, Mike. All right, guys, thank you all. Talk all soon. All right. Okay. And, uh, you know, look, uh, generally speaking, coaches don't like these true freshmen to get out there <laughs> yeah, right. and, and make too many comments because sometimes they give bulletin yeah, board material yeah. and they, they talk before yeah. they think about the repercussions. Oh, by the way, did you see this uh, this uh, low ball wide receiver? I think he's got four catches for about six yards, uh, telling everybody that uh, a and going to tinkle in LSU's cornflakes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bud, man, uh, a lot has to happen between now and then. But LSU, their, their destiny is in front of them. But, man, they control their own destiny. Got to take care of business this weekend against UAB, a team that likes to run the ball. Got to be physical at the line of scrimmage. Dude, enough on offense to get out of the game injury-free. Then you turn the page to Texas A&M. Jimbo, the whole debacle with the contract, the eighty-six million dollar buyout, the you know the, the freshman class that cost him X amount of dollars. It was the best one on paper uh, in the history since we've been recording. Uh, a lot going on uh, still left in this season. Uh, certainly enjoy the ride. Uh, we know Atlanta is right down the road. LSU will face Georgia, but a couple teams stand uh, between now and then. So, Bud, man, uh, what are you looking forward to this Saturday? What can LSU do to kind of fire you up moving towards the end of the, the season? Yeah, I want to take care of the football. I want to play a little bit more, uh, uh, obviously, faster and, and, and cleaner on offense and continue to do great things. Still got to clean up some things on special teams. Yeah. I like LSU to win by double digits. And uh, we will be back next Tuesday. But if uh, you're not around, we want to wish everybody an early Thanksgiving. But we will be doing a show next Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Yeah, didn't talk any Saints because they're having a terrible year. If you want that information, go somewhere else. We're not going to talk about the Saints. We certainly appreciate you watching Tigers Roar. Check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pelican Broadcasting. And we'll see you next time right here from Tigers Roar.